Welcome to my AnyRail tutorial series. Today I will be demonstrating how to apply sections and gradients to your layout. For the purposes of this video I will be using a previously saved file and I will also assume that you are familiar with laying track in AnyRail. However, if you are not, you can click on the following link to watch my quick start video. OK, let's get started. I'm going to first cover creating sections. I'm going to show you two ways this can be done. The first method is the one I prefer to use. Once you've laid your track, right click the join at the start of a section and select Add Isolator. Insert additional isolators as necessary. Then double click a piece of track within the first section to be created. If you need to select a section separated by points, you can hold the control key and double click or single click the additional track as necessary. Once all track pieces within the isolators are selected, right click the newly selected track and choose create section. The track tab will automatically appear. Here you will be able to give the section a name, change the font style and size of the label that appears on the layout, specify the usage type and change the section's colour. If you are unable to see the section name clearly, try changing the section colour or the font size of the text. OK, now let's move on to the second method. Although you don't have to add isolators before creating sections, I find it makes the process more efficient. To create a section without adding isolators first, you can either select the track that is to be in the section using the control key and clicking each track piece individually, or you can select the first track piece, hold down the shift key and click on the last track piece of the section. The following demonstration shows how to use both the control and shift keys to create sections. You can view the different sections you have created by clicking on File, Info, List of Sections. If you don't specify a name or usage for a section, that section will appear with just the length and the word unspecified. Now let's take a look at gradients. Right click the starting join of the gradient, click set height, I'm going to leave it at zero because I will be starting the slope from baseboard level, click OK, move to the end of the slope and right click the join, click set height, set that to the height you want it from the baseboard, in this case it's going to be 8 centimeters. Measurement units can be changed on the settings tab. We then need to select the track to be sloped. This can be done by selecting the start of the slope, holding down the shift key and then clicking the end of the slope. I'm then going to right click the selected section and choose smooth slope. To view the gradient heights and percentages we need to click on the home tab if not already there. Tick the boxes slope percentages 
and height on slopes. If you're unable to see the figures, you can either change the section colour or zoom in. The alternative way to create a gradient is to right click the start join and select create slope. We can then enter the start point height which will have a 0, the end point height which will make 8, the slope percentage we will leave as 3 and the direction of the slope from the start point which in this case is south. We'll click OK and the slope is created. If after creating a slope you notice that a piece of track has a slope percentage in red, then the slopes are likely to be too steep for locomotives. This can be corrected by either selecting the remaining track pieces within the section, then after right clicking the selected track we click the set height option and enter in the end height of the gradient. In this example it is 8 cm. We click OK and the track is levelled. Or you can lay additional track, then reselect the track to be sloped and choose smooth slope. If you want a join to stay at a certain height when changing or adding track, you can right click the join and select lock height. Thank you for watching. In the next episode, I will be showing you how to create user objects and how to use the shape tools to mark out your baseboard.